and it stopped raining. I'm kind of sad. So today is a very special day. It's the first day that I'm going to be Snapchatting in a car by myself in a parking lot on Snapchat. No, wait, not on Instagram chat, whatever this is. Welcome to the wonderful, crazy world of Paris. So being in a car by myself and it just rained, I wish it was still raining because I really want to talk about my emotions. <laughs> the absolute necessity and importance of emotions is what I'm getting at. I've been doing a lot of work with my shadow, the things about myself that I really don't like, and I'm, I'm working through something at the moment. And so to illustrate this, I'll give a few examples of how I implement this in my meditation. This is my meditation, and someone asked me through a DM uh, how I approach meditation. Well, here it is. First of all, the way I define meditation for myself and in my experience, uh, it's not the same for everybody, but for me, meditation is anything that puts you in the present moment. Anything that helps you live in the present in what you're doing at that moment, not the past, not the future, but right now, is a version of meditation. My passions and all the people who are watching this story, your passions, is a version of meditation. When I'm out training, doing parkour, or when I'm out, uh, when I'm in my dance studio dancing, like, that's all I'm thinking about, just expressing myself and living in that particular moment. Moving forward, there's different types of meditation. There's the mindfulness as well. Uh, mindfulness of yourself, mindfulness of everything that you're feeling, your emotions, etc. A lot of people attach a negative connotation to emotions and feelings and think that emotions and feelings are bad and you shouldn't have them. Which is completely not true. Emotions are vital and necessary to help us grow, to help us learn about what we like, what we don't like, what we prefer, and what we don't prefer. Now this mindfulness meditation, this is something that I've been doing for numerous days because I've been working with, again, my shadow. Basically the way I do this is I sit with myself. I sit with myself and I am honest with myself, but I'm not judging myself. At least I try my best not to judge myself in the way I feel about things because it's a very difficult process, but it's something that can be learned. To further clarify, sorry it's kind of broad, but I listen to my emotions, I listen to my feelings, and I don't judge them, I just kind of let them flow, I just let them be. Basically, I look at myself from an unbiased point of view. I look at myself as if, as if I'm talking to another person and hearing someone else's story. An example to better illustrate this concept would be insecurities. When I work with my insecurities, and oh I have a lot of them, I have a lot of insecurities or PTSD, like things that bother me because of my past that I might not realize that happened on a subconscious level, but it just, it, it's there. Like how I was diagnosed with ADHD and depression when I was in seventh grade, and so I have a very high sensitivity to when I forget things. I'm extremely hard on myself when I forget things because I feel stupid, I feel crazy, I've been called stupid, I've been called crazy by people that I care about, and yeah. Sometimes I'll lock my keys in the car, or other times I'll forget to take out the trash, or I'll forget to just do one little thing, and I'll hate myself. And that's trauma, because being diagnosed with ADHD, something that made me feel crazy, and something that makes other people treat me differently because of a label, is traumatic. But once I was able to recognize that that's where it comes from, then I was able to really work with that insecurity and kind of forgive myself and accept it and understand it. This is just one example of how this can work. It also works with jealousy, like in relationships. I have to say that I don't think I'm one to give relationship advice because I haven't really had the best relationship experiences in my past, but let me further go on. Jealousy at its core is an insecurity. It stems from insecurities. It stems from you not feeling good enough about yourself to realize that you are good enough for the person that you're with. You see, to realize that kind of truth is to be honest with yourself and the way you feel about you. Jealousy stems from you, how you feel about yourself. And so when I was going through that experience of jealousy, I realized that, well, it's because I don't feel good about myself, so I want to learn about myself. I want to be able to get to know myself, to understand myself, and to realize that I'm not such a bad person, and to be confident in who I am. Because I was able to get to the roots of my jealousy, I'm able to now then focus on a bigger picture, that I want to get to know me, self-discovery. I want to be comfortable in my own skin, so that I'm not, I don't feel that way anymore, so that I don't compare myself to people anymore. I want to thrive in a world where I can be myself without fear. 
and I can be authentic and unique in every way that I am, that everyone is. For every perfect flaw, I want to be able to love myself. I've been told many times that people love me, but I don't, I want to love myself, you know? And to just stop for a moment and to realize that this all came from jealousy. All this knowledge and wisdom and knowing of what I want to do comes from jealousy. It comes from the exploration of that single emotion. And that's the importance of emotions and the importance of how they teach us about who we are. I'm still experiencing self-hate. I'm still experiencing lots of insecurities within my life. And I'm still working through them. But the first step is to just acknowledge the fact that, yeah, these things bother me and I want to fix them. And it definitely takes time. And it's definitely ugly. And it's definitely a scary and fearful experience being honest with yourself and not judging what you feel. But it's something that I'm willing to do because I don't want to be afraid of myself anymore. I don't want to be afraid of my emotions and I don't want to be afraid of my mind. I don't want to be afraid of who I am anymore. And so I'll work through these emotions and I'll put myself in different situations that I'm not comfortable with so that I can keep growing as a person, so that I can get to know myself a little bit more. And yeah, isn't that corny? But it's serious. Like this is, I mean, people are afraid to be like this too. People are afraid to be deep. And I'm, I, People are afraid to confront their emotions and people are afraid to answer the questions that everyone has, but no one has the courage to find the answers to them. It's courage to be honest with yourself, to listen to yourself, and it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to be deep. It's not a bad thing to think about these things. To explore the biggest unknown that is in this life ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> There's really so much I can say about this. I can tell so many stories of how bad it's gotten to the point to where like I I just have breakdowns but they're necessary I ran away lots of times I've hurt myself many a time I've <laughs> I've done some crazy things but they were necessary for me to understand and kind of wake me up to the reality that <laughs> I have to be honest with myself and let me clarify this phrase really quick being deep is not a crazy thing it's kind of our natural state our curiosity these questions that all of us have but never have the courage to find the answers to that's our natural state to learn to grow to want to find answers and when you ride that when you ride your curiosity when you follow your highest excitement in your life then it will lead you to amazing crazy places and again I'm gonna stop my monologue for a second but like be conscious of what just happened what just happened to me? These talks are completely freeform. I don't plan anything. I just wanted to talk about my emotions. But this is where it led me. It led me to it, uh, just an understanding, some kind of wisdom. This is literally illustrating my meditation process. Usually I do this by myself. I do it in my head and that's it. But I wanted to share it on Instagram. Not everyone will watch this story. Not everyone will watch it all the way through or take in my words or even believe anything that I have to say. But for the people who do resonate with this message, then that's why I do this. It's for you guys. Because I want everyone to not be afraid now. I found something that helps me get through life. And so I want to share it with other people. Whether it resonates with them or it doesn't, at least it's me contributing to whatever world. And once again, last thing, stopping and just being conscious of what's going on. I do this so that I can look back and reflect on myself. I'm going to watch this story over and over again and I'm going to listen to my words and I'm going to see that maybe I'm not such a bad person. I've done that a lot. It's 2.30 a.m. and I'm one of the only cars left in the Cafe de Rock parking lot. For those of you who watched all the way through, thank you. I hope you took something from it. If you didn't, it's completely okay, but I think I need to go home now. I have work tomorrow.